I'm Lou Brutus for our next conversation. We go to the beautiful Southland of England, where Jordan Fish of Bring Me the Horizon joins us from his home. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, you know, considering the circumstances of the last couple of years, I'm uh, I'm doing well. Tell me a little bit about the area around your house without obviously giving away the address. What are you <laughs> exactly doing location. There when you're not on the road? Um, yeah, we kind of like near a town, town where I grew up in. So yeah, we never we never really moved away. My kids go to school just over the road. So yeah, it's 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 pretty chill. I never we never kind of moved away from here because we like it. We're near the family and. Yeah, my my parents and my wife's parents. So yeah, it's very uh, it's not very exciting, but it's uh, it's nice for us because I'm away a lot. So you know, when I'm back, I like to I like to catch up with the family and all that stuff. Yeah, and I, I would think, given the sort of vagaries the life of a touring musician uh, has, uh, it's got to be good to have some bedrock place to go back to your entire life. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's the kind of my feeling is like, I get to see all the crazy places and, you know, visit all these, you know, travel the world and stuff. And then like when I'm done, I'm kind of happy to just come back to a plain old town that I grew up in. Cause you know, I know people here and I've got friends here and stuff. So yeah, it helps to keep um, me grounded, I guess is without sounding cliche, but you know, yeah, I would have to think if you've got old friends around, they probably, they're happy for your success, but they're not going to, you know. They all think I'm a loser still, so that's cool. <laughs> so I, I think we should begin uh, by talking about Strangers. Um, there have been some really great songs uh, by artists the last couple of years dealing with the problems of the world, but this is one that I think deal specifically with mental health issues which I, I think have really come to a head given the circumstances of the last few years so any um sort of background you can give into the creation of the tune would be great um well we started writing it in uh, in los angeles actually in a writing session and um we really just i think that the the strangers room for the strangers line was the first kind of lyric that um ollie came up with and and then I think he spent a while trying to work out um, what that meant. And I guess the, the initial thought was, you know, it's kind of like a live show, you know, from our point of view, you know, really the live experience. You, you're in a room full of strangers, people you don't know, but you're all connected and experiencing the same thing, singing together. And there's a weird kind of connection at a live show that you don't get quite anywhere else. I think, you know, with the people next to you, you, you don't know them and you're probably never going to see them again, but you're all sharing a moment. And it, it is, a, you do feel that when you're watching a band and, you know, everyone's together. Um, it's kind of an instinctive primitive thing. So I think that was the initial thought. And then, and then I think Ollie, Ollie kind of the double meaning of that was, was him and his recovery and his rehab kind of situation being in a room full of strangers um literally in a room full of strangers who've all got their own issues and their own problems and are all kind of have ended up in this situation um sharing that experience i think that was kind of the two parallels that he wanted to get across with the lyrics um and then musically it's kind of a where the last record i feel like referenced a lot of the kind of more new metal kind of side of things of stuff that we grew up with this one's got slightly more of an emo kind of feel it's got a hint of 30 seconds to mars about it um some of those kind of bands like a little bit of my chem 30 seconds to mars vibe so and we love trying to take things that, that we you know kind of slightly throw back things that we grew up on and spin them in a new way slightly um and you know make them feel contemporary so um i guess that that was kind of our, our aim with this track and and a little bit with the last track try and take some some of those things and and find a way to make them fit with what we're doing now. So that was that was really the inspiration for this song. What was the order of creation? Did the lyrics come first, and then you try and find music to match it, or was it usually? Out? Usually, it's like we have a little bit of a bed of some kind of chords or a tempo or some kind of feel. Like we we had this we had the kind of rhythm that we wanted to do this uh, kind of six eight dun, 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 kind of feeling thing, which we have never really done a song in that kind of. Uh, that kind of meter before so there was that and then there was kind of the chord sequence and then a little bit of a melody and then the lyric actually the kind of main lyric came quite early in this song um 
And then it's a process for us. You know, we took it away. We sat on it for a bit. We, we completely changed the verse and the pre-chorus and took it in a different direction. The song was originally like, quite mellow. And then Ollie came back and he was like, I've been listening to it. And I feel like I feel like it would be really cool if we made it into kind of a big festival-y, um, you know, emo rock song. Started it with just big kind of strummy, almost like Foo Fighters guitar type chords and stuff. And um, yeah, it proved to be as usual proved to be a, a good shout and the song really came together then we got we got a much stronger verse and it just felt it felt like the right balance and we had festivals coming up some big festival slots so we, i think in the back of our mind we were thinking you know we want a big song that is going to be a big sing-along everyone's gonna gonna sing it back to us and we can have a real moment in the set because we haven't written a song quite like this for for a while and again not only does it have that sort of anthemic vibe to it good for festivals if we go back to the original part of your answer about the subject matter, it, it certainly fits in with, you know, the surroundings of the folks. I think so. I mean, I think songs about, you know, mental health, depression, they're always going to be relevant to some extent because everyone's always, you know, that's just part of the human condition. I think to, you know, dealing with humans are always going to suffer those kind of things. Um, so you know, it's, a, it's a topic that you can, that you can write about in so many different ways um so yeah i guess i guess but i think people are particularly at the moment struggling because of, or have been because of everything that's going on and it, it doesn't i think the uh the knock-on effects of the pandemic are are also going to be quite bad you know financially i think is, is a huge thing and um a lot of people are still adjusting to life after COVID. I mean, it, it, it might not be, you know, it might not seem like that much of a big deal, but, you know, we, we lost a lot. Um, and things aren't quite the same as, as they were before. So, um, yeah, I think there is still a lot of people that, you know, are struggling mentally with, you know, working out how to, you know, how to kind of deal with the changes in the world. And, yeah, like I said, you know, things in the uk i don't know how it is in america but you know everything's twice as expensive as it was fuel is twice as expensive as well bills have doubled in price it's you know so for people who are struggling financially it's that's hard as well um so yeah you know as i've gotten back to some shows and festivals of late as hopefully things are at least in that respect getting back to something a bit more normal uh, i found not only that I missed the actual band and, and musician and artist performances. I missed that camaraderie of being around other people to whom music is something really important. And that includes the artists, that includes all of the fans there. Is that something that you yourself missed there for a couple of years? Yeah, I think so. I, I think the other thing we realized really is from for that huge period of time of not really being active as a band. I mean, we were active in a writing and recording sense, you know, over Zoom and, you know, in parts together, but really not very much. But I think we realized how much we missed, you know, each other as a band and the whole touring experience. And yeah, we've definitely, coming back, it does feel different actually, and, and in a good way, you know, because I think the appreciation for each other and just being able to be on tour, you know, we've been out doing festivals and, I, th I feel like we, you know, we're we're getting on better than we ever have as a band because because everyone's had that time, you know, that two years of like what it would be like if we didn't have that. So there's definitely a bit more appreciation for, you know, the friendships in the band and like the the whole band dynamic. I feel like everyone's like really uh, just excited to be able to get back on tour, you know, to hang out with each other, to get to go to, you know, different restaurants or hang out in different bars or play shows meet people do interviews even you know things that before might have felt like oh they were you know a bit of a pain in the ass when you're on tour you know you come back out after two years off and you feel like oh this is <laughs> this is a privilege to do this it kind of resets because it's basically how i felt when i first joined the band i had that initial thing of like this is all cool like i love doing interviews i love signing things i love meeting fans and over years and years it you know it does slightly fade and you start to take things a little bit for granted so i feel like one benefit for us is like having that time off, you know, going out and seeing fans again and meeting fans. Like even the other day was one of the first times I've had a chance to actually meet fans after a show. We played a show in France and I was like, oh man, I didn't realize how much I'd missed this interaction of seeing people, 
you know, who've just watched the show and just been, you know, just absolutely blown away. And they just want to say, they just want to get it all out and say, wow, that was amazing. I love that. And thank you so much. Blah, blah. It's like, that's a nice feeling. It's nice to have people give you letters and tell you how much the song means to them and stuff like that. So yeah, I feel like we've, we've all kind of had a bit of a reset on that front and realize, you know, not that we ever didn't care, but you know, it just uh, definitely feels stronger now that we've had that time away. What would be one thing, and you don't have to name names, I'm not looking to embarrass anybody, but sometimes when bands tour a lot, there are little idiosyncrasies between one band member and another that can drive people nuts and you're cooped up in a bus together. What would be one or two of those things? I mean, I would say most of them probably come from me. Uh, <laughs> what do you do then? What do you do? Well, I, had a, I had a real bad vaping phase and that was that did not go down without I me. Mean, I, I ended up like... I built my way up to one of those like huge plumy cloud machines. Yeah. And um, I used to just sit in my bunk and vape. And I, I, that was, I know that was irritating for people. Um, so in the end, I kind of had to knock that on the head. I've just got like a little tiny one now that's quite discreet. Um, so yeah, my vaping was annoying. That set off alarms in hotels in the middle of the night. And uh, one time a fire engine, the fire service actually came so it was problematic so yeah i'd say that one what else is annoying i mean some people like to go quite late with the ipad on full volume in the in the bunk that can be annoying if you're knackered but i mean to be honest with you we're pretty i mean we're everyone's quite considerate now you know like i'd, I'd say you know we don't you know we're we're a little older so you know we're in bed by you know two or three which may, you know, it's not that early, but, you know, because if you're playing a show, at, you know, on stage, off stage at half 11, you can't really sleep at midnight. So, but yeah, generally, generally, you know, people are pretty chill now. I can't think of much, to be honest. I mean, like I said, most of the stuff is probably me, but um, yeah, no, we generally, we get on pretty well. You mentioned fan interactions before. Is there anything you remember off the top of your head, somebody bringing back to sign that you thought, I didn't even know this existed for our band, some sort of, rare poster or promotional item um not really so much that i mean it's it's often like amazing pictures like people will draw people will draw us sometimes and they'll bring it back to sign um and i think we've had some of those where I, i'll be like oh thank you so much she's like oh no it's not it's not for you it's for me so i have to sign it and then give it back to them <laughs> they it. and i'm just like well i want it it's amazing but obviously it's their piece of art. So but I did have someone draw me the other day and gave it to me and I've, I've, I've got that upstairs. That's incredible. But we do keep, I mean, everyone keeps all the stuff we get given. Um, so it does make it back. I mean, Ollie's got a whole lot of stuff. Um, I don't know where he stores it all, but it, it all ends up, it all ends up coming back. So he's, he's probably got, I mean, it'll be an entire borderline warehouse of stuff over the years that people give him. And some of it's incredible, you know, knitted things and, some of the crafting and stuff you see is just amazing. But yeah, I'm trying to think of anything really rare that's not really. Most of the rare stuff I've 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 got some cool things I've, from over the years. What's what's like the one coolest band thing that you've kept? I like the test pressings for the vinyls because I usually get the test pressing um, sent to me. So I always do something, try and do something cool. I don't keep them because I'm 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 not. I don't think there's much point in me keeping my own bands. Uh, mm. I'll keep things that fans give me. But in terms of stuff that, you know, is band memorabilia, it, it means more to someone else than me. So I'll usually try and find like a home for it. But the test pressings for each record are cool, I think, because there's only one of them ever. Um, so, yeah, one of them I sent to someone. It was a fan who uh, said they were getting married and the first dance song was one of the songs off this record. So I, I sent them that, the, the test pressing of that record as a kind of like wedding present, you know, as like a surprise wedding present. Um, and the other one i gave away there was another fan the other day and i've given that one away so yeah the, the test pressings are pretty cool um what else i don't know that's probably the coolest thing you know cool thing i think anything that's like one of one i think is is a cool thing to have we're running short on time a couple other quick things if i may sure. the uh spelling of strangers between the cap and uh, non-cap letters it's a bit disconcerting to look at how did it come to be now we just do it to be annoying at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done, you. I can't give you a better answer than that. 
No, it's, it, you know what, the, I wouldn't say it's annoying, but it's, yeah, again, it's disconcerting. I, I have to look at it twice each time I see the title of the, uh, the song, you know? That's the idea. Strange. Good. You don't know how to pronounce it. And uh, final, uh, finally, um, tell me about other new music and uh, wider releases on the way. Yeah, we're working on it. Um, we don't really know the plan yet, but it's just trying to find time. We've actually, uh, on this American tour, we've hired a bus with like a huge studio in the back lounge. So and we're going to keep writing right up until then. And I'm hoping that we'll be in a position where we can we can just sit in that bus for the whole five week tour and and really get into it and try and try and get get the record, you know, finished. I don't want to say that, but, you know, we're going to that's the aim is to try and, you know, get it, get some really good shit um, by then. So uh, yeah, we're going all in. 